Hi, I'm Jack O'Connor, you're watching BuzzFeed UK. It's one thing to play a role for someone who isn't alive anymore and another for someone who can actually see the film portrayal. Did you have any contact with Blake during any part of filming? Did you have any fears or concerns about the role for this reason? Yeah, so I, I met him before we started shooting, not to study him, just more of like a courtesy. Yeah. I, uh, when they're portraying you in this film. Obviously, there's, you know, there's a lot of emotion, I think, harboured by him. But he was just cool as custard, uh, really open, really easy to talk to. And uh, I, was, I was very grateful that, that he took the time and, and was so open with me. And we talk mainly about football. I don't know if he's seen it. There's been a lull in our chat. Oh, really? So I don't know if he's seen it. In hates me or... No, I, I would doubt that very much. Marisa, in researching Amy's life, mm -hmm. did you discover any surprising or lesser known facts about her that you think would surprise the fans? I mean, the truth is, is that her, as we like know, her life was incredibly well documented for better and for worse, I think. Towards the latter part of her life, she was so overexposed. I don't know, I mean, it's, and it, the little tidbits that I did get that were, did manage to stay, stay private, I think, you know, the family and her and like, and the, the friends, the people that do sort of know these things, they, they kind of deserve to have their sort of like semblance of, of privacy yeah, with yeah, this. Totally. So I but I think that in itself was a huge sort of takeaway for me. It's like what must it have been like to you know, I think we see these images of people and, and like you see a two dimensional image and, and it looks like a woman walking down a street because that's what you see. But you turn that image around and it's a woman being followed down a street. And I think that that was the thing that really that really stayed with me um, if we're talking about, you know, secrets in her life or anonymity mm. and anonymity is something that you really need especially if you're struggling and it was sort of the lack of that that, that, that surprised me more than anything yeah mm -hmm. dead right okie dokie if you could travel back in time to give amy any message what would you want to say to her oh just hey up your song's a boss mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing uh you're loved and uh yeah top draw Marisa, as you were researching Amy and preparing for the role, were there any stories behind the lyrics you were especially excited or shocked to learn? There's a song in Frank, I can't, now I can't remember which one it is, there's a song in Frank that's about her canary, Ava, and we, the canary is a big, big part of our film actually, she's sort of like there throughout, and I think Amy's relationship to animals was something that I didn't know about before. How much, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but like how much she loved animals and also loved this bird, Ava. And I, I, I think Ava died when Amy was about 12 and she held a funeral for the bird and, you know, like a very, very like caring person, very maternal, but like even towards these animals that she loved incredibly intensely. Um, I mean, Back to Black as an album, I think it's very clear where the inspiration comes from. You know, she says about Frank too that it was about an ex-boyfriend and, and a lot of it is, but also a lot of it is about like her brother and her mom and her dad. And I think that that's an amazing, that's really cool. Shows the sort of place she was in in her life. You know, she was essentially a girl when she wrote that album. But Back to Black is definitely from the point of view of a woman who has loved hard and um, and is in, in, in pain. So I, I I think the thing about Amy's lyrics is they're so brutally honest that it's not really like, I wonder what that means, you know? Poetry in it and the emotional complexity and maturity to be able to like, not just feel a thing, you know? We know that, that there was an attempt to like numb some of those feelings, but also there was an attempt to like, get them down and express them with the world. And I think that's so brave. Um, yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? You, you hear a song all your life, but you hear it again, and the lyrics can mean something new to you and something more profound. Yeah. Because of your own life experience. Totally. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, it's amazing. What is the one main message you want audiences to take away from seeing Back to Black? Oh, it just feels, feels to me, um, from having seen it, just like a, like a reminder, but an, an amazing generational talent. Uh, whose music was so original and it's only getting better with age. Mm. Um, 
the emotions, one of our own. And it just, just made me feel proud to be like from here. And yeah. you know, and, and, and have some sort of experience of that era. You know, I, I think that's what I've taken away and I, 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 hope, I hope people would share that. Let's imagine you and Amy Winehouse switch places for a day. What's the first thing you'd do in her shoes? Hey, Glastonbury. I mean, maybe, I kind of did, you know, I mean, I did like a version of that in our film. I think, well, if we could go back to like, to to filming, I think I would have, uh, I know it sounds so crazy, but I just would have like gone, I don't know what, was, I wanted to know like what, you know, what perfume she wore, and like those kinds of things. Mm. I made like decisions about them, but for myself, but I wouldn't know how accurate I was. Um, but yeah, I guess playing Glastonbury would have would have would have been cool. But I, me as Marisa, that's kind of my worst nightmare actually. I don't think I would want to play Glastonbury. Playing Glastonbury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no.